Oh goodness, I've been quiet. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Get Your Play Online. My name is Liz, and the bucky boy that you hear in the background is my puppy. He is Corbin. Shh. He's a nine month old Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Corbin, quiet. Shh. Quiet. He's a nine month old Pembroke Welsh Corgi that is making a fuss in the background. Um, but today, Corbin. Shh. But today, what we're going to do for. Corbin, thank you. Corbin, hush. Arr. Today, what we're going to do for Corbin's Playtime Live is we are going to <laughs> talk about dog sports. So there are sports for dogs, but one and one of them, and I apologize if I put my sunglasses on, it is so that I can see because the sun is shining very brightly this morning um so basically this morning we're going to talk about <laughs> sports for dogs and as you can see behind me there are weave poles and on my other side is a jump but i don't know if you can see it so what we're going to learn about today specifically is an, a sport for dogs <laughs> called <laughs> agility. So dogs have a lot of fun with agility. So some of the things that we're going to talk about are what it is. Um, and then I will post in the comment section a video of some professional dogs doing it. Corbin. Corbin Dean. I will post in the comments some professionals, a YouTube video of some professional dog trainers doing it so that you guys can see what a professional looks like doing an agility course. So I just threw that in the comments section below so you guys can check that out. But that is some of an agility competition so it shows some of the extra things that I maybe don't have with me today. So, before I get started showing you and talking to you about agility, officially, Corbin, quiet. Hey, quiet. Good boy. Corbin came over to say hi. Before we get started talking about agility, I just wanted to, Corbin, quiet, give you a little disclaimer that I have never done agility before and neither has Corbin. So this is very new for both of us. So I had to do a lot of research and learn a lot about agility for this live in particular. So I might not have all the answers and Corbin is not going to look perfect when he's practicing the course. So just know that we are not perfect and if you want to see somebody that's amazing at it, you guys can check out the video in the comment section. But yeah, so I just wanted to give you that little disclaimer that we know a lot. Corbin, quiet. We know enough to talk about it and do it, but I'm not a professional. I don't know in everything about agility. So I just wanted to give you that little disclaimer. So, what is agility? So, let's talk about that. Agility is a competitive sport for dogs. So, there, it's an obstacle course, basically, for dogs. So, some of the things that you might see in an agility course... I apologize about all the barking. Um, made of jumps, hi, <laughs> tunnels, and walkways. So, I have a and some weave poles and things like that as well. So the dog and the handler, so the dog in today's case is going to be Corbin and I'm going to be the handler. They work as a team and I am going to help Corbin navigate the course. So when he comes up to the weave poles, I'm going to tell him weave and I'm going to have him on leash. Just when you're getting started, it's easiest to have 
your dog on a leash so that you can help to guide them where they need to go. Um, some people, such as myself, do it for fun, and but others. Corbin, quiet. I apologize for all the barking in the background again. Um, some people do agility training just for fun, to get their dogs some exercise, and that's kind of how I'm doing it, is I'm just doing it for some fun and to help Corbin get some exercise and have a little fun on this Tuesday morning. Um, and other dogs enjoy competing in agility trials. So if you've been watching this cor live with Corbin for a while, you remember my best friend Emily coming over with her dog Caleb. Caleb does agility training and does competition and did when ever since he was a puppy. So he is well trained and knows the agility course inside out and so does my best friend Emily. So they could compete in agility trials and that's basically what they did at there. So me and Corbin have never competed in an agility trial nor will we because he's training to be a therapy dog and it's it's a completely different thing, but we do really enjoy watching them and seeing all of the dogs getting some really great exercise and having a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy the little video that I put in the comment section below of some really well-trained dogs that really know agility inside and out and can do it really well. So I figured I would share some tips of from the A... American Kennel Club, which is the certifying organization for dogs. So they basically just say that they are purebred or that they are a good dog, basically. So some tips from the AKC. Number one tip is to be patient. So this activity is basically just for you and your dog to have a lot of fun. So they might not get it right away. So just making sure that you're patient with them and allow them to kind of take the time to adjust and get used to it is really important. And they're not going to get it right away. You kind of just have to guide them and help them out with that. Um, next is increase their attention. So keep the focus of your dog on you by getting them interested in their treats beforehand and then using the look or watch command. So I will kind of... Shh. Corbin. Corbin. Baby. Baby boy. Um, so I will kind of show you that before I get into the agility course. I'll kind of show you how I get Corbin's attention. It might not work because there's lots of dogs around here this morning. And Corbin is very easily distracted by other dogs. But I will try to get his attention and get him to look at me. Um, so a command that you can use are look and watch or watch. And that command basically just gets them. So you have a treat and you bring it toward your eyes. And it gets them to look, look you in the eyes and then you just keep repeating that until they get it. Um, tricks are a great start to agility. So... Corbin knows a lot of tricks, so he knows things such as spin, or spin is a great one because it helps to helps them to get stretch their back out and really helps them to get used to the movement of the weave poles. And another um, one that's really great is bow. So, you, so for bow, Corbin doesn't know it yet, but you have them kind of stretch their have their butt up in the air and they're paws on the ground their front paws on the ground kind of just bowing and that's a great one to stretch out their back for the jumps um and that goes into our next tip developing your dog's flexibility so dogs are not going to be flexible right away just like humans they need to develop that flexibility and some great ways to doing do this are the trick spin and that, that helps to stretch out their sides. So let me see if I can get Corbin to come here to show you guys spin. I'm just gonna move that. Corbin! Maybe you can teach him watch. Look. Corbin! Come! Corbin! 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 Corbin, look. Corbin. 
Hold on, I gotta get him interested in the treats. He's a little one track minded right now. You want a treat? Hi. Hey, you. Hey, you. You want a treat? Okay, he's not interested right now. We'll come back to that later. But, oh, you, you interested in treats now? Corbin, you want a treat? Come here. Corbin, you want a treat? <coughs> nope. Corbin, your treat. Your treat. No. Okay. Anyways, we'll get him reinterested in that later. And I'm actually gonna scoot up my chair because it's a little more shady up here. Okay. So moving on to our next item. So another tip is to practice handling. So have them on a leash and practice walking your dog and getting them comfortable being on both sides of you. Um, so treats are really great for this. So if you hold a treat next to you, like so, they will follow along with your treat. And that's great because that helps them to learn to be on each side of you and gives them a reward as well. Um, increasing their body awareness. So dogs do not have great body awareness right away. Corbin. So dogs do not have great body awareness right away. So it's really great to help them by help helping them to tell where their back legs and front legs are. So usually when they're walking or doing anything, their back legs should follow their front legs and with agility they have to be a little more delicate with where they're putting everything so with that you can use a variety of ways to help them with that so you can have them walk through a ladder that's laid down on the floor and that can help them to develop that um body awareness and it can help them to kind of just practice the steps and help them to be aware of where their legs and their body is. Another way to do this is by having them perch on a box. So if you have them sit on a box that can really help to develop their body awareness. Another thing, that, another tip is building their confidence on moving objects. So, if you notice, I do not have a ramp. Uh, you can't really see what I have behind me, but I do not have a ramp today because I know that Corbin will not do it. Corbin, I know my dog, is a very scared and very tentative of new situations. So, I know that about him and I make sure to be gentle when I do put him in new situations. So, that is why I chose not to include that today because I just want to get him comfortable with the items that I do have. He's still not entirely comfortable with the weave holes and the jump, but, and I have been working with him, with them for a couple of days just to get him comfortable with them. Corbin! <laughs> um, just to get him comfortable with them. Um, so starting small with moving objects, the things like skateboards or wagons or wobble boards even are really great for just getting them aware of that objects can move and it's okay. They can balance on them. They will be fine. Um, and just reward your dog a lot. That's a big thing in dog training is just reward your dog as much as possible. Um, and then if they just put a paw on it, reward them for that because that is the behavior that you want. And then they'll get more comfortable with it and it will eventually climb onto it. So another thing that can be really challenging with agility is getting them used to the dark. So tunnels can be very, can be frightening for dogs because they are a dark enclosed space or dark space. So they cannot entirely be comfortable with that at first so you kind of 
have to get them comfortable with being in the dark. So just getting them to go into the dark tunnel can be really challenging. Um, start by rewarding them a lot and using a box or something similar to get them comfortable with the dark space. The next thing is jumping. So I do have a jump here today and I am going to have Corbin go over it. Please know that I have it at a height that is comfortable for my dog. You, If your dog is smaller, you want to make sure that the jump is a lot lower to the ground because you want to make sure that they can almost just walk over it at first and then you can gradually make it bigger because if you have it too high and your dog doesn't know how to jump over it, it can be really, really dangerous for them. So you have to make sure that you are keeping your dog and yourself safe by making sure that your dog knows that they can do it and getting them comfortable with it is really important. Um, you can start with jumps by having a pole, like a, just like a stick or like a broom set on two objects. So it could be stacked up books that are about the same, that are the same height. And just get them comfortable with going over that. That can be something that is really important for dogs and getting them to go over it safely. So objects should be low enough that they can walk over it and they should not ever be set on a slippery surface so that they could maybe slip and injure themselves. You wanna make sure that your dog is super safe when they are jumping. Um, you also want to make sure that the pole that you're using is able to fall off the jump because if it is not your dog and your dog hits it with their back legs as they're jumping over, that can injure them and we wanna make sure that the dog is being safe and is not getting injured by doing something that's supposed to be fun for them. So just make sure that if you do do jumps with your dog that the pole can fall off, they're not on any slippery surfaces and it's low enough that they could almost walk over it. Um, always, always start super low with the jump height so that your dog doesn't injure themselves and they can get better and they can strengthen those muscles in their back leg and they can gradually build up how high they jump to. Weave poles. So weave poles are another thing that I do have today. So to teach weave poles, you can't it can be really challenging with Corbin. I know it has been a bit challenging to get him used to weave poles. So things you can use are cones, tomato sticks, or poles in the ground. Um, just make sure you're getting assistance from parents or caregivers to teach your dog any skill or teach them anything at all. Just making sure that you're getting assistance or permission from parents or guardians is super important because you wanna make sure that you're safe and your dog is safe as well. Um, and for the poles, a good place to start, the AKC mandates that the poles should be about 24 inches apart. So just making sure that they're about 24 inches apart is also important. Hi, you coming to say hi? Here. No? Okay. So an added tip from me, that isn't from the AKC register, please make sure you are keeping your dog and you very safe while doing agility. Make sure you look things up for how to safely teach your dog the obstacles. Make sure you use lots of treats to make sure your dog is comfortable with everything. And do not try and teach your dog to do the agility course without assistance or and or permission from a parent or guardian. So that is all the tips that I have for you guys today about agility so i'm going to quickly run over what obstacles are needed and show you some of the diys that i did so an agility course needs has about usually has about 12 to 18 obstacles so these include tunnels jumps tire jumps weave poles a ramp and a teeter-totter and then I think there might be some other ones that get included in some other places, but that is the agility courses, usually, things that the agility course usually has. So I am starting out with a very, very, very basic course for Corbin. 
Um, and actually some of the more challenging things for dogs to learn. So the weave poles, and I have a jump back there. Um, and then I ha also have kind of a tunnel. I didn't, um, completely do the DIY, but I can, I'll show you it. Um, so I'm going to show you now a little bit about how I made my agility course and some alternatives you can use to make your own agility course at home for your dog and you to play in and do some sports with. So I'm going to put a link in the comment section below later. Um, actually, let me look it up right now. Hold on, it should take me one second. So I'm going to put in the comment section below the one that I used to make my agility course. Well, my weave poles and my... Okay, perfect, it commented. So the, the link in the comment section below is the link to how I created my weave poles and my jump. So, um, let's start out with my weave poles. So, I'm going to kind of move you guys a little bit around and show you my agility course. So, this right here is my weave poles. So, you can see that I have them about 24 inches apart. And I made them out of PVC pipe. You do not have to get as fancy as I did with mine. But it is a nice way to have them last a while. And they're able to be outside even in storms and stuff like that. Um, and you can also use sticks or poles. That kind of thing. To do the weave poles as well. So that is my version of weave poles that I made. Actually got to go fix... They're a little tilted, so I gotta fix that. Okay, and then right here I have my jump. So the jump actually has one more. So the jump actually has these things right here where you can add another one. I will never add another one for Corbin because he is not big enough and he will not make it over that big of a jump. But that is my jump that I made. Bring it back over here. So, you can use a bunch of different resources to make a jump. So, like I said before, Corbin is a corgi and he is really low set to the ground. So I will never ever set something super duper high for him because I know he's not going to be able to get over it and he will injure himself. But if I had a Labrador Retriever or a bigger dog, I would set it a little bit higher so that it would be a challenge for them. Um, so mine jump was made out of PVC pipe. Um... For this one, you could all for jumps, you can also use a broom propped up on some books or another surface. Um, the important thing to remember with jumps is just to make sure that they're not too high or they're not on, set on something slippery. Okay, the last one I have today, and I didn't complete this DIY because I wanted to save my um, save this. But I will maybe make one in the future. But I made mine out of a laundry basket. The one side is not cut out yet. But I will probably cut it out in the future. Depending. I have to get com Corbin is not comfortable with it yet. So I need to get him comfortable with it. Before I commit to cutting out the bottom. That's why I haven't cut out the bottom of it yet. I just want to make sure that he is comfortable with the tunnel. Before I even start with the DIY but this is an example of a DIY tunnel that you can make so you can get a laundry basket it's pretty cheap DIY and just cut out the bottom of it and 
that is a way you can make a tunnel for your dog. Usually the tunnels are a lot longer and in actual agility courses, but for the purposes of me and Corbin, it doesn't need to be exactly what an agility course would look like or anything like that. Um, you can also just use boxes. It's very simple to just cut open the end of a box and use that as well. Or any other t item that's kind of tunnel-like. Just make sure that it's big enough that they can make their way through it. Hi, baby. Corbin's down here saying hi. Um, so, Corbin does already have some of the skills that he needs to be successful doing the agility course. Hi, baby. Um, so he knows weave already. We learned it during one of his lives with water bottles in the hallway. But, uh, in the... It hasn't terribly transferred out here yet. Um, I have been practicing with him a little bit this morning and uh, yesterday and the day before just to get him comfortable with it because with Corbin, you have to get him comfortable with it or he won't do it. Um, but I have been practicing with him a little bit and he does no jump a little bit. He knows sit, so he knows some of the skills to do agility, but it's just the um, transferring it onto the course. Um, so I am super excited to go through the course with Corbin. He is not going to be perfect right away, so keep that in mind. I have been practicing with him, but he is still learning. He is... A puppy and he is still learning the skills that he needs to go through the course so I am going to back you guys up and show you or I'm gonna remove my chair here and I'm going to show you some of the th skills so that means I'm gonna put Corbin's leash on and I have a belt that has treats in it that I am going to put on so this is what I use when I go for walks with Corbin and when we go to his puppy training, I use this to help me keep his treats. It's just easier for me to be able to reach into this as I'm walking and grab him a treat. And like I said in before, before you even get started with you're doing the actual agility course, you got to get your dog interested in it. So I am going to put this around my waist, get the leash around him, and get him interested in treats. Put in cup. Just going to move my chair out of the way. So now you can see. The agility course. So I'm going to get this leash on Corbin. Come here. Come here. So he hasn't really said hi much today. But this is Corbin. He is my nine month old Pembroke Welsh Corgi. He's the sweetest little boy. He is training to be a therapy dog one day. So before I even get started, I am going to get him interested in treats. And I am actually going to tilt this down a little bit. Come here. You a treat? Are you ready to go? I already did a little bit of practicing with him this morning. Corbin, you want a treat? Sit. Corbin, sit. Good boy. Here. You want a treat? What are you doing? Corbin. Sit. Corbin, sit. Hey, can I treat? Sometimes you have to get them interested in the treats before they'll even do anything. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Just giving him treats and getting him interested in me. You dropped it. Hey, come here. Come here. Come on. Fine. Alright. I'm gonna not try and drag him too much 
There's other dogs in the neighborhood. That's why he's kind of distracted right now. Carmen, over. Good boy. Carmen, over. Good boy. <laughs> Carmen, stop. Hey. No. Good boy. No. There's another dog that he's interested in. Carmen, over. Good boy. So he's got the um jump down pretty well. So I just tell him over and he goes over it. Come here. Hi. Come here. Over. Over. Good boy. Come here. You're all tangled, buddy. Come here. Over. <laughs> oh, no. See, he hit it with his back legs, and it fell down. Good boy. So that's what you want to happen. Because you don't want it to stay on if he actually hit it with his back legs. Come here. Oh. And he absolutely annihilates the course. Okay, I'm gonna set this back up. Come here. Over. Good boy. Good boy. Come in. Okay, let's see if we can get the lead pulled. So there is a specific way that you're supposed to enter and exit the lead pulls. I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right, but don't 100% quote me on it. Weave. Weave. I'm kind of using the leash to guide him right now because he doesn't entirely know. Come here. Weave. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And then I like to go back through them. Weave. 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 Good boy. Good boy, you and Tree. Good Tree. Carbon, look. Carbon, look. Good boy. He is not interested in these treats. Come here. Weave. 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 Back up. Weave. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Let me reward you for being a good boy. Robin. Hey. Let me reward you. Let me reward you for being such a good boy. <laughs> okay. Well, he showed you guys the jump and the weave. So. There you go, buddy. I'm just gonna let him go play. Corbin! I'm gonna try and give him this treat. He was not interested in treats this morning. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today on sports and dogs. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about agility and checking out a small agility course. I will see you guys later, and I hope you guys are enjoying the rest of... I'm going to grab my chair again so I can sit down and do this. I hope you guys are enjoying the sports activities that we have going on this week. And I hope you guys have been enjoying this Puppy Playtime Live. Next week we are going to do a bath time with Corbin. So we're going to do it outside. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that and seeing how I get my little child clean. It's going to be like a puppy pamper day. So I'm going to give him a bath and I'm going to brush his teeth and I'm going to put some coconut oil on his toes. So it should be pretty fun. So I hope you guys come back for that next week. And I hope you guys are enjoying the rest of the activities that are happening this week. Bye guys, I will see you guys later.